Hello everyone, how are you going? Welcome to I Went to the Most Asian City in North America. Now this was actually a suggested video, so I have absolutely no idea what it's about besides it's generally about Canada, and so let's just find out, shall we? So there's a city in North America that I want to tell you about. It's pretty unique in that its population okay, Vancouver, is 74% sure. Asian. Wow, okay. 56% Chinese. Okay. And 60% immigrants. It's also one of the only cities in North America where you'd come across something like this. I've never seen a pig okay. being cut up in a mall before. Wow. This is nuts. <laughs> yeah, true. I've never seen anything like that either. Today, we're going to be exploring what life is like here in the most Asian city in North America. We're going to okay. grab some Asian food, talk to some local friends of mine, have some fun, and discover what makes the city so Asian. All right, chapter one, tourists are interesting. Hey everyone, we are in Richmond right now in Aberdeen Center. This is one of the biggest and wow. coolest malls in Richmond, and I'm here That's with a lot my of lanterns. friend Aaron. Yo, what's going on, guys? And Alice. And right now we're going to go get some lunch. Let's go. There's Ooh, a lot going a nice on in Richmond. So I decided to call up my local friends, Aaron and Alice, to show me around, talk about what there is to do in the city and the influence of Asian culture. So we're in Aberdeen Center Food Court right now. We're going to eat a whole bunch of different types of Damn, food. Damn, look at all those In things. Richmond, what is there to do? <laughs> food. <laughs> no, seriously. Whoa. Richmond Holy moly, is what foodie are these paradise. Things? Over here, you see like actual Asian companies exclusive to Asia in like these malls wow. that you'd never find anywhere else. Well, obviously, like I said, I had no idea what I was going to be walking into with this entire video, but I can certainly grasp what we're going to be talking about now. No, this entire thing is certainly very interesting in terms of just how, I guess, immigration and all those things can just completely transform a city. I mean, I guess that certainly makes sense because if you do have such a high percentage of the population wanting one thing in particular, it makes sense that companies go, hang on a second, why don't we go and just make business there? And so you get all of these businesses just moving in where you go hang on a second i've never seen that before but it's just this massive multinational that you've never heard of and i guess that's not surprising in terms of you see it on very micro scales you know you've got chinatown and you go over here you get this cuisine that cuisine with that cuisine but to have an entire city kind of be well the most asian city apparently in north america is certainly just a massive massive step up there's also a lot of like activities originating from asia the escape rooms karaoke okay. internet cafe yes. oh, yeah. the richmond yeah, night right. market yeah Whoa. But, and i've been there like a long time ago but it's <laughs> Not good, guys. Wow. Not good. It's really expensive. You know, if you're like traveling here, yeah. it's cool to see it's a like one. It's a one-time thing. It's a, it's yeah. a place called Steveston, yes. yes, which is very like OG and historical. Yes. If you're from Richmond, you're lacking date ideas. What am I like looking here? Steveston, <laughs> right? There's these things that, honestly, probably in any other city, you might not really get to experience. There's this one local spot. Like if you're from Richmond, you'll know East Spot. Mm. Let's go there right now. We're in okay. one of the most iconic East Richmond spot. spots. E-Spot. Family Entertainment Center, what is this? There's like an arcade on steroids. Wow, look at this place. That is crazy. It just goes everywhere. That's so many different things. Nice driving, man. I just want to take that back for a second. You can just see the amount of variety that they've got. And really, they've got like everything under the sun. Look at like all the different machines, all the different kind of like claw machines and stackers and then basketball things. Oh, There's so please. many different things there. That's crazy. Racing games. Oh. Aaron here is trying his luck. And he's gonna try to win the brown. You get like a the brown? Cool machine. It's the line friend. If you know, you know. Oh. What? I'm so confused. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, the classic pommel, look at that. Well, actually, I guess you probably wouldn't even call it a pommel, it's more of a, just a massive joystick, but just it is so classic, that kind of bubbled molten plastic. Oh, man. Oh, oh, Easy to wipe oh, down, oh. I think. Oh, we actually no won something? Oh, no, so didn't. Close, so close, so close. That's it. That's it. That's the one. That's no. all we need, folks. You should no. know that you should never play a claw game, surely. Because even That's if you just need, look folks. at the last five seconds, no. look at this. It just like slips off and off and off and off again. Like you think casinos have bad odds in your favor. Just look at the claw machine in comparison. Casinos just look like angels. Oh no, I completely whiffed that one. Look at that. The house always wins oh, apparently. I'm so sad. No. Oh, I spent $10. $10? Oh, this is the last bought, like, one. Them, you gotta sure. do this. Lining it up, look at him go. Ooh, I didn't even know which machine it was. Ooh, oh, it. look this at that. Surely it has to be the one. This look the at one. that. Oh, oh, it's actually got it. It's always when it hits the top, it falls no. out. There we go. Like I said, it's just like absolutely. You, you just can read it like a book. You just know, okay, well, I've got it and it shouldn't fall out. Oh, whoops, I just slipped. I'm sorry. Oh, I almost had it. It's okay, I had fun. It's all you that never bad. had anything. It lulled you into a false sense of security. From the activities, is what it to did. the food, to the vibe, you can definitely sense the Asian influence in this city. Now, it's one thing to experience Richmond as a tourist, but what about life okay. here as a local? I think the local experience <laughs> is what brothers. makes this city so unique. 
My man Aaron, you are a local of Richmond here yeah, as dude. well. Yeah, dude. 20 years. I think you have a really interesting perspective because you're not Asian, yes. yet you live in such an Asian city. Yes. So growing up, what was life like? All my friends were Asian. I <laughs> that's a good kind of like way to begin. I was exposed to a lot of different cultures. Yep. Kind of the Asian community. BTS shirt. BTS right? shirt, yeah. Oh, BTS shirt, yeah. Take that back. Look at that. He's got a BTS shirt on. I mean, honestly, I'm sure you could just get them at virtually every store in terms of what they seem to be saying. Like, it's just such a massive thing in that regard. But no, I guess it certainly makes sense. You know, you're just surrounded by all these people. And with a percentage stat, like, what was it? 70 or plus percent of people? Honestly, I'm fairly sure you'd probably be able to find a city somewhere in Asia that doesn't even have 70%. And so, yeah, that is just a massive percentage. And so it makes sense as to why all your school friends or even just the entire school, you know, because if you are going to be having 70% of the entire population being a certain ethnicity at the same time it makes sense that that would just carry directly into schooling as well you know kids and just generally everyone's going to be growing up surrounded by the kind of same percentages and so realistically now I'm just wondering how this all came to be you know I've said in previous videos that Melbourne is I guess it's the second Greece that has the highest capital or even just the highest amount of the Greek population outside of Greece and so obviously you have mass migration at some point but why and when did it actually happen I'd love to know. So Alice you are a local in Richmond yes growing up here like what was life like at that time when I I came, the Asian population here wasn't that big. And I think okay. it's only in these last couple of years where the Asian population really boomed here. And Ooh, okay then, well when was this video made? 28th of Feb 2020 is when it was uploaded. So obviously, let's just say from 2015, if she's kind of talking the last couple, being in the last few years. So I guess that certainly answers my question about when the entire thing has kind of shifted. I mean, hey, maybe she hasn't really realized it, but it's actually been quite linear. And you go all of a sudden going, hang on a second, I'm just surrounded by all of these things. We've always kind of been there. It's just a micro exploit in terms of businesses over the last five years. But at the same time, I guess it certainly just as well could have been all within the last five years and so I just want to know why like how has it just become this massive shift because that just seems very very quick you know for all of these things to happen within a five-year period that's a massive change to the entire city and like people started adapting to the Asian culture and we started to you know see a lot of changes in the city okay. when I was like a bit younger a so lot yeah of the she just said within the last five years you've seen a lot of changes in the city and so that's pretty darn impressive if you ask me be coming in like either be immigrants or people coming into the city and it would be kind of honestly frowned upon but kind of I guess a little hesitant because you said it perfectly. It's like, the Asian invasion. Yeah, like, yeah, I don't want to say it, but like, <laughs> people have started to accept the Asian culture, but also on the other yeah, side of the coin, I think the Asian culture has started to also accept like non Asian people kind of respecting their culture and, you know, being a part of that, even though they're just including them. Yeah, including yeah. them, right? You've got the Asian community, which is obviously the majority here in Richmond, and then you've got the non Asian community, and it's kind of you know, these two different worlds, there's nothing wrong with kind of merging those two people together, yeah. those two communities together. Oh, well, what else is there to say to that? I mean, obviously everything that is said, you can kind of understand, you know, I feel like generally humans are quite fearful creatures and just from a lack of understanding, generally, you know, they go, oh, hang on a second, we've got this entirely new thing that I just don't understand. Or if nothing else, it's only just different to what I know. And so you're just kind of hesitant to kind of involve yourself or involve them. And so you go, oh, like, you know, like little kids at the playground, basically. But after time, you know, everyone just kind of works out their thing. They go, okay, actually, you're not bad at all. Oh, you're not bad at all either. Oh, I like this. Oh, I like this. And so eventually you just come to common grounds and everyone can hopefully just live in harmony and in peace with each other. And I mean, sadly, all around the world, there are examples of that not exactly being the case. But I feel as though it just comes down to the fact that people want to feel included. And I feel as though the only real way to do that is instead of just completely just kind of wiping out a city's culture and just building whatever you want on top of it, you just have to continually add to it. And I feel as though that's a great thing. You know, when you're just constantly adding little things to the city, you're just either adding a little bit of religion or you're adding a little bit of food or even just people and ideas. Like it's all just great for overall growth of the city. I wouldn't say it's like similar to living in China. I, I think there's still okay, quite a wow. big difference. But I'll say it's definitely very convenient. Like if you want Asian food, everything All is right. like right across the street. You know, if you want to go to like the bank or the hospital, there's going to be Asian people there who can serve you and understand right. you. Yeah. In terms of the language, being I so many Asian people, yeah. there still is that Western culture influence. Yes on yeah. top of everything else. Which is what I was saying, you know, you just add to it instead of just wiping it out and starting again. Now me and Alice are gonna go do... Karaoke! I did karaoke. not expect. Of course. We're gonna do some karaoke singing today, <laughs> but I guess today is my first debut. First time hearing Jensen sing. Yes, we are in the karaoke room. This is my first time oh, being in... That was just a classic <laughs> last look at all those Jensen leds. Yes, we, we are in... We just had to take it back to this because just look at that UV. My God, is there anything more karaoke than that? Karaoke room. This is my first time being in <laughs> such a... 
Fancy. Fancy, yeah, it's quite fancy, actually. Wow. I can't actually say that I've ever been to a karaoke room like that. I mean, I think I might have done karaoke when I was maybe like 10. That's the last time I've done it. But I've never been to like a karaoke place where you get your own pot and room and everything. For goodness sake, it even says number six on the wall as though you're in Squid Game or something. My God. LCD screen. <laughs> what the hell is so advanced? Have you never had that before? No. Are you kidding me? As someone who's Chinese, I feel what makes Richmond different from other North American cities is how normal you feel being a Chinese person here. That right. in itself brings pros and cons, but at least it means that you can always find an authentic Chinese restaurant nearby. <laughs> of Where course. We... I mean, I can only imagine they're just going to be like, well, if you have 70% of the population being Chinese, oh no, 56% of the population being Chinese, you're just going to be little with Chinese restaurants. And man, I'm fairly sure that you're going to be getting some very good Chinese because they're all just going to be competing for each other. You know, if everyone knows that's the place to go, everyone's going to be going there. We are right now. We are at... Chengdu Spicy Restaurant. What did you order? Spicy, at? okay. So I got a chilled, mouth-watering chicken, and then this one, Yu Xiang Rou Si, stir-fried shredded pork in spicy garlic sauce. Damn. And that's when I started to wonder. That's when looks did this good. transition begin? Oh, thank goodness he's actually going to answer my question because I've just, like, it's been eating me going, okay, well, even though she said that, when did it begin? And even though when it was like, oh, it's just so many different things and why? I just still want to know why. Like I said, when I talk about the Greeks and I guess the Italians as well coming to Australia back in the 50s, I think it was, I can understand why it was. But at the same time, just oh, I want to know why just mass migration happens all over the world. When did Richmond, this small city in Canada, Look go from that. only having a handful oh, of Asian residents that is the to most having classic looking Oh, I just want to take this back. Canada. That is some of the most classic looking images I've ever seen. Honestly, if these were put into some kind of American 50s movie, just look at that. Like, they are so classic. Honestly, well, I've only ever seen a photo like that. Just, well, I guess not even in a photo. I've just only ever seen kind of images like that in a movie just when you're watching. I don't even know, Back to the Future, whatever it may be. But just look at all those cars and the mountains in the background. Really, like, there's no massive buildings. It's all just kind of low-lying. It's just like a really, it's a massive town is what it is. Having a handful of Asian residents to having the most Asian residents in North America. Wow. To answer that, I met up with my local friends, Judy and Nick, to learn about the history of the Hong Kong people in Richmond. Here we go. Transition so right now we're at Lido restaurant. This is a legendary local spot in Richmond. And I'm here with Judy, Nick, my Kanto friends. We're eating a bunch of different food today, Ooh. all from the HK cuisine. Gonna make Very hungry. authentic. Both of you are born and raised in Richmond. Correct. And so how was it like growing up here as the majority like Asian, you know, like Cantonese. Our parents and family moved here in the early to late 1990s, and that's largely mm. due to the Hong Kong mm. uh, China takeover, where Britain hands over Hong Kong back to China. So Britain handed Hong Kong back over to China, so a whole bunch of people left. Is that what I'm gathering from this? So take me back to the 1990s. Early to late 1990s, and that's largely due to the Hong Kong uh, China takeover, where Britain hands over Hong Kong back to China. So I guess what this just means is I don't really know enough about the entire situation to have any idea what is really going on. But based off what he just said, obviously Britain had Hong Kong at some point, and they, I don't know if it was a contract or whatever it would be, but they handed it back over to China, and so something then happened there. So during this. Time, lots of Cantonese speaking people moved to Richmond. It was wow. Hong Kong. But why Richmond as well? Like, you could have chosen literally anywhere in the world. Like, why isn't it Sydney? Why is it Richmond? Why isn't it New York? Like, I just want to know. I mean, is it geographically close or is it geographically the same or is it just. I don't even know. I would love to know if there was a reason or if it just kind of happened that way. Like, you know, it just kind of snowballed as you got a couple of people and then it, everyone just suddenly went there instead. It was these Hong Kongers oh as well God. as other Asian immigrants during the late 80s to early. Oh, they just look so good. Early 2000s that laid the cultural foundation for Stop showing images of them. What Richmond is today. Most of the people that we grew up with are Chinese. Having like restaurants like these, you feel like more connected with your heritage, like where your parents grew up. Is Chinese school like a very popular thing here? Yes. He literally went to both. Went to Cantonese and Mandarin. Wow, that's a lot of learning to have two languages or to be going to two schools and then also English obviously as well. And so, man, that would have been a incredible cultural difference you know like you just all these different learnings and cultures just suddenly just like just coming in the doors and of course like i already said you know you're just getting incredible food as a perfect example as we're seeing here and it's just making me hungry but no you just got so many more people and all of a sudden you just got what, the highest percentage of asians in any city in north america what is one thing you got to do when you come to Russia? eat come to this restaurant 
<laughs> this restaurant. So there's this thing in Richmond. Now. Every restaurant is pretty much like cash only. Is this place cash only? Yes. yes. Oh my god. Of course. Growing up, did you even notice like Richmond was different? Or I don't think so. Where I'm from, Ooh. like there's not there are Asians, but there are not that many Asians. Oh, actually, I forget or I've completely missed about where he's actually from. So I'd love to know that. I mean, I'd love to also kind of pull up a map and go where all these different cities are in terms of he's saying he's from here. Then obviously we've got Richmond and blah de blah de blah goes on. But no, everything they're saying certainly makes sense. You know, if you grew up in a particular place, like where he he grew up in comparison to wherever they grew up, then it certainly makes sense as to why you would be going to these schools because it's just kind of the, what you do. I think it's cool that a little bit farther away from my city, there's Richmond. <laughs> Where I can kind of, kind of like explore my own culture and experience it a little bit more. See, this is the beauty of Canada that everyone's culture can fit in. So no matter where we are, we can enjoy other people's culture. There we go. Like I just was trying to explain. I mean, hopefully I did an all right job in just trying to say, like, you know, it's just all about everyone being inclusive and just trying to fit everyone in the entire kind of mix. You know, it's not about one culture just completely dominating the entire thing. I mean, obviously it's just kind of based on the population in terms of this case, and of course also local geography in terms of this is still Canada. This isn't China. This isn't anywhere in Asia. No, it's still Canada, and so you're going to have those influences as well. And so yeah, I guess that actually would be quite refreshing to go. Oh, I can actually just go somewhere, not all the way to the other side of the world. I can just go. I don't know how far away it is, but let's say an hour's drive or whatever it may be and actually just kind of experience a more traditional or more I don't even authentic experience I guess. I think it's pretty incredible how this city exists. It really is the most Asian city in North America. I love this land. After this trip I think it's also more than just that title. It's a city that has let multiculturalism take part in its evolution. A city that lets you freely be who you are. Whether you're someone who eats pineapple pizza or pineapple buns, you can eat both <laughs> okay. here in Richmond. <laughs> there we go. That is such a random Thank way you so much for watching. Off. Well, there we go. That is obviously going to be the end of the video. Like I just said, that is the most random thing I've ever heard someone, or the most random way I've ever heard someone just wrap up an entire video pineapple on pizza or pineapple buns. I mean, hey, I certainly feel as though I'm kind of partial to both. Or actually, no, I kind of like both, I'm fairly sure. But no, that was a great video. Just, you know, just a very different thing to what we've kind of been looking at previously. You know, we've generally seen either Vancouver or Ottawa. So obviously, those ones are, I think, the main ones that come to mind. I wouldn't actually or I don't think I've ever heard of Richmond. I mean, I guess outside of the part of Melbourne and the AFL team, but no, obviously this entire video was just kind of eye-opening to go, hang on a second, you've got this massive population that really just kind of shines a light on the diversity of Canada. But anyway, in saying that, I reckon I'm going to call it there. So thank you for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, make sure to do the YouTube algorithmic things down below. Also, if this is the first video of mine that you're watching, then maybe you want to check out some of the other ones I've done. You know, I've checked out heaps of Canada content. Oh, and also make sure to check out the original video in the description below. Or hey, maybe you even just want to consider subscribing so that you don't miss another one of these in the future. But all in all, have a good one and See ya.